Okay, welcome to the layman's guide to creating custom paint schemes for the Lotus 49 for use within iRacing. The idea behind the video is to create a walkthrough uh, that can be easily followed by somebody with no experience in creating uh, paint schemes to enable them to get something that is personalized um, and that they like the look of for use within the broadcast races um, on the weekend. So first thing we're going to do is need a program uh, to be able to manipulate images. So what I'm using for the purposes of this is a free downloadable program called GIMP. All you need to do to get started is to Google, then download. You can download a Windows version or a Mac version depending on uh, what type of computer you have. Uh, save it to uh, your computer and then you're ready to go. Next we're going to need something to manipulate, some, some, some sort of image um, that goes onto the car. So we go to the iRacing paint shop and we download the Lotus 49 car template. The car template is basically the skin of the car. So iRacing generates a frame and over the top of that frame they put a skin and that's where we see the logos, the colors and all of that sort of thing. So we download that template and we save it on our computer somewhere where we can remember and then we open that image within the GIMP program and then we start to manipulate the image and create our custom and personalized paint scheme. Once you've done that, open up GIMP and this is what you get. You get a series of tools. We're not going to go over all the tools. As I said, this is going to be very specific. Um, what I'm aiming to do here is just simply to load up the template then we're going to look at how to change the color of the car. We're going to look at how to put down some stripes. We're going to go over how to put a graphic onto the car and how to add some text. After that, then it'll be up to your imagination to use those elements to come up with a personalized scheme uh, for yourself. So we'll only be using a number of these. I don't know what all of them do. Um, and really it's not necessary to know what all of them do in order to get a good result. Here we have the basically the desktop area where the image is displayed and where we do our work and over here we have an area that displays the layers uh, that make up the image and we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a second. So next thing we need to do is to open up the downloaded template. So nav navigate to where you stored it on your computer there's the thumbnail and the first thing we'll notice is that originally it comes as a PSD file and uh, GIMP uses a file format called XCF so when you go to open up this file it'll ask you whether or not you want to convert it the answer will be yes so just convert the file and it'll open up within your workspace second thing we need to do and as I said this is not an in-depth how to use GIMP. This is a walkthrough that you can follow to come up with your own paint scheme. So step number two, save as. Save that template, name it, and it'll give you automatically the um, file type XCF. So save it as whatever you like. So now you've got a saved template that you can start working with. First thing we need to know is how layers work. This image is not like a photo. It's not a single image. What it is is a series of layered images on top of each other. So when I click on these little eyeballs here I can turn on and turn off the different layers. The other thing to understand is that these layers are in order. So the bottom layer is this main car body color layer. On top of that is this layer, on top of that is that layer, on top is that layer. And the reason to understand that will become clear a little bit later when we start laying down our stripes. But the main thing, the main point being that each different element of your design needs to be put into a new layer. Uh, and again I'll demonstrate why that's important later um, or why it's, why it's convenient later but um, 
probably the easiest explanation at the beginning would be to say that if I highlight this particular layer and then I start doing things within here, those changes are recorded and saved on that layer. So that means that if I make a mistake or if I, it turns out I don't like what I've come up with, then I can't change it. All right. So what I need to do is create a new layer for each new element that I put into the uh, into the template, and then whenever I want to, I can turn them on and turn them off. All right. So if I'm not happy with something I've done, I can either delete it, delete the whole layer, or I can simply turn it off. All right, for use later. Okay, so I'm going to turn that one off for a start. We don't need that. Color change logos, that's up to you. Some people like to run with them, some people don't. In order to turn them off, all you do is change their color. Sorry, click on the uh, eyeball there. Okay, now, first thing you might want to do when coming up with a custom uh, car is to change the color of the car, to change the paint color. So how we do that? Is we make sure that we highlight the correct layer. All right, now down here, our bottom layer, that's the color of the car. We can double check that by clicking on the eye to make sure we're working with the correct layer. We go over here then and we click on the paint area here, the little paint tabs, and up will come our paint display where we can mix and choose whatever color paints we like. Um, a convenient a feature of the program is that when we do use a paint we can if we like left click drag it over here and it'll save it in this area here for us if we're using it um, regularly so we don't have to try and remix it all the time the other thing that uh, the program does is it keeps a color history up here so these are all the colors that I've been using fairly recently so if I work on a particular layer in a particular color, then I go away and do some other work and I come back again and I need to find that color, I can find it over here, all right? So to change the color of the car, one, make sure we've highlighted the correct layer. Two, choose a color. Three, click on the paint can. Four, click on that layer on the car. Okay, and the color will change. There are certain areas on the car that you can't change. For example, these gray areas here, those are set by iRacing, but the main body um, is able to be changed, as are some of these other parts, uh, but we don't need to get into those at the moment or there it is parts. Parts anyway. All right, so that's how you change the color of the car. Next, we need to view our work. So we need to be able to check our work to make sure that it's looking good. So there's no sense spending whatever amount of time that you do on creating a custom paint, getting to the end, loading it into Y Racing, and discovering that it looks terrible. So we wanted to check our work as we go along to make sure that we're on the right track and that we're happy with progress. So the way we do that is we go to iRacing and we open up a replay. Any replay will do that your car appears in. Here's one uh, utilizing a skin that I've got um, uploaded to Trading Paints. And we can move in and out of that by using Control or Delete and our Task Manager to go between the replay and GIMP. Okay, now we've already got this particular template saved as an XCF file, but what I'm going to do now is I'll just update that save to keep that color. And then I need to export this as a Targa file. iRacing uses Targa files to identify what paint schemes go on the cars. Okay, if we look here, let's see if I've got it.
if you go to documents and you go to iRacing and you go to paint and then Lotus 49 once you've got your replay open you'll see all of these different TGA files iRacing uses these TGA files to identify what paint schemes go on all of the different cars the way it knows which paint scheme to put on which car is that this number is your own iRacing ID number you need to know that number in order to put it into the file type to get iRacing to change the paint scheme on your car. You can get it from your account section in your iRacing account. Okay, so get yourself that number. Export your XCF file in the same format used by iRacing, which is car underscore and your iRacing number. Save it somewhere handy. And for me, I've got this file here. That's my practice one. You'll get this dialog box. Just click on export. And that has now been exported as a TGA file ready for use within iRacing. What we now do is we open up the destination where I just saved the XCF file as a TGA file and we also open up the folder documents iRacing paint Lotus 49 which iRacing is using at the moment to read the paint schemes within our replay. I now drag this across the new paint scheme hold down control and copy it across into the iRacing folder. I click on copy and replace and now I've changed, I've replaced my file here with the new file. I then go to the replay. I hold down control and F12. Yes, F12 to bring up the camera controls and then manipulate the camera controls to, to get a good view of the car and I hold down control and F9 no control R sorry control R to re-upload the paints so what iRacing is now doing is it's searching again in that paint folder for the paint to put onto the car and there we go Bring the camera back up, use the camera controls to have a little look and see if we're satisfied with what we've done so far. Um, and if you are, we can continue. If not, go back and change the colour to something more suitable. Control Alt Delete to bring up your task manager to get out of that replay and go back to GIMP. The next thing we might like to do is put down some stripes or something like that. Once again we need to remember that we need to lay down a new layer for all of our different work. If I was to put a stripe down now without putting a new layer in and whilst this paint was highlighted I'd be putting that stripe into that layer. So if I didn't like the stripe and I saved my work I wouldn't be able to get rid of it. So what we need to do is come up here under the paintable area um, layer denoter there. All of these different layers here are under that. Click on the top one and then right click and add a new layer. Then we name the new layer whatever we like and since we're going to put a stripe let's just call it top stripe. And we'll put it on the top of the car. The way to put a stripe on a car is simply to go up to the tools area selection tools rectangle select and then it's a very basic drag left click and hold and drag to create a stripe up to your imagination where you want to put it and how you want to do it but for our purposes a simple stripe down the middle of the top of the car is going to be fine now that's highlighted 
So this is a new layer that's being laid on top of the car color, that layer, the logos, and the pit box colors. All right. How we color it is exactly how we colored the main body of the car. We make sure that that layer is highlighted. We choose a color. We can choose the color down here, gray for example, or we can choose the color up here, red, blue, whatever. Uh, I think we'll go with gray. Gray. Click on our paint can and then click inside that rectangle stripe that we just laid down. Okay, and there's our stripe. This tool here is what we use to manipulate images. It's called the move tool, obviously you can see there. Um, it's nice and safe to have that on most of the time. If I've got my paint on and I accidentally click somewhere, I could, I could change the paint color. So I just like to keep that on. All right, now we need to check our work again. File, export car to, export to the uh, target image that we created before. We need to update that image. Come back down here and bring that destination up again. There it is. I've just updated that file and included the stripe. Bring up the iRacing folder again with all the paints in it. And now I need to update my individual file within there again. Go back into the replay, hold down control and press R to update the paint. And there we go. We've got our new paint scheme, got our new paint color for the body of the car and we've got a stripe. Now the stripe looks okay but I think it could use a little bit to a little bit maybe pinstripes on either side just to make it stand out a little bit more. So we can go back in, control alt delete, task manager and go back into GIMP. At the moment, that layer is still highlighted. Uh, so what we need to do there is just, after we do anything, just select none to get rid of that so we can move on to the next thing and so the program doesn't get confused about what we're actually trying to do. Now, we need a new, because we're doing something new, we need to create a new layer. So go to Top Stripe, right click, New Layer. Name it something. Uh, top stripe pin stripes might be appropriate. Now, there's two ways we can do this. I can use the rectangle select tool again and create a very small pin stripe there. Maybe duplicate that and paste it there. Or I could do it by utilizing how the layers work. And I think I'll do it that second way. I think it, it's easier, it's a bit simpler, and it'll also give you an idea of, of how this structure and how the layers um, operate within the whole image. So making sure I've got my new layer highlighted, I'll go back up to Tools, I'll get Rectangle Select again, and I'll make a rectangle that is slightly bigger than the one I laid down with the grey stripe. So what I'm aiming to do here is just have a little bit of space on either side of the grey that's going to look like a pinstripe. All right, now I could zoom that in by using view here, going to zoom uh, what are we at? Uh, we're at 33% already. Let's go out to maybe 50. There we go. Now that's fairly close. All right. If you get it wrong, all you need to do is hover the mouse over the rectangle and you get these yellow areas that will allow you to, if you hold your left mouse, to drag and change the sizing. Okay. 
but that looks fairly close. So the pinstripe color I'm going to choose uh, at random, I would probably go with black, I guess. All right, so the way to color that, once again, make sure we've got the correct layer highlighted, choose our color, which we've done. Uh, and just to mention that the color that is going to appear when you click in here is the one that's on top of these two rectangles. Okay, and you can change that by clicking on there. All right, so layer is highlighted, color is highlighted, back to our paint can, click. Okay, and there is our black rectangle that is slightly bigger than the stripe that we originally laid down. I'm just going to go back and use that tool again. Now to get an under, this will give you a really good idea of how these layers work. At the moment, the grey layer is underneath the black layer, whereas we want that to be reversed so that the black layer forms pinstripes on either side of the grey layer. And the way to do that is simply to highlight that and drag it on top. And there we go. All right, so that's a very good demonstration of how the layers work how um, this image is made up of a load of different images or layers um, and how it's useful um, to have every piece of your work in a different layer. Now if we get in game and decide that those black pinstripes are no good, we don't have to scrap our whole work and start again. All we need to do is delete the particular layer we don't like the look of. All right, so it's, that's extremely convenient and really you should be making sure that you do a different layer for every part of the work. Once again we'll save, export to our car file, go back and check our work. Drag it across, copy and replace, control R. Now with these, these stripes, you can put them any, anywhere you like. Um, well, that looks okay. So um, next thing we might like to do, go back into GIMP. Next thing we might like to do is put a some sort of graphic on the car. All you need to do that is a graphic. These are just simply uh, PNG files or JPEG files or whatever that uh, come from Google. Um, and all you need to do is click and hold, drag them across here to the layer area, release, and it will create a layer with that image in it. Okay. I need to have the move tool highlighted and then I can move that to wherever I want it and for purposes of this we'll just stick it there on the side of the car. Um, what you'll notice is two things. Firstly that might not be the right size so we need to know how to resize it and secondly you can see little white bits in the corner that shouldn't be there. Um, so we need to know how to colour in those little white bits to make the logo the focus and get these little corners to match the colour of the car. So first thing we're going to do, once again select none, make sure we've got this highlighted, the correct layer, then to resize we go and we use this tool here, the one with the little diagonal arrow. Okay, click on that then click on your image and that will appear. All you need to do is go to the corner, left click and hold and resize it to whatever you like. Release the mouse, back, click on the move tool and that's ready to be positioned. Okay. Now to get rid of these little white areas we use a tool called color select, making sure that we've got our correct layer chosen we go up here to the tools, selection tools, 
by color select and we click very carefully in that white area and now what GIMP has done is chosen all of those white areas ready to be manipulated in some way. What we need to do now is choose the color of the car frame to color in those areas. We come over here and we choose whatever color the car was. I can't remember which one of these it is. So what we do is we use this tool here, just click on it, and then when we click on whatever car, uh, whatever color we want, that color will appear here and will be the color next used when we use the paint can. So I'm going to click on the side of the car here. You'll see that it's matched that color. I'll click on the paint can and very carefully click the white area and now those edges are all color matched. All right. Select none. Check our work. Back into the replay, control R, and then swing the camera around so we can get a look at the right angle. And there you go. Back to GIMP. Now in order to get that image on the opposite side of the car, we need to create a new layer, which is a copy of this layer, and we need to slide it across there. Move tool, right click, duplicate layer. Okay, there's our duplicate of this. Making sure that's highlighted and that I've got my move tool, I can now drag that across and approximate the distance and get that about right. Now obviously that's upside down and back to front. Okay, so we need to change that. The way we do that, making sure we've got the right one highlighted, we go to layer because this is the layer we want to manipulate. We go to layer, we go to transform and we flip horizontally. Now it's backwards. We go to layer once again, transform, flip vertically, and there you go. Export to car. I won't bother, we can have a look at that a little bit later once we do something else. But now you've matched, you've changed that logo and you've put it on the other side of the car. All right. Next thing we might want to do is put a little bit of text in. Uh, it might be a driver's name, it might be something else, whatever you want to put on there, but it's easy to do that. All you need to do is click on the text tool, which is the big letter A over here. Click on that and it brings up this little area. You can choose your font, you can choose the size of your font, and you can choose the colour, play with all of those little, those different options. So there's no need to create a new layer for this because as soon as you start typing the text it will automatically create its own layer so you don't have to do that separately so we'll change that color so that we can see the text um, that might stand out okay 42 is about right good uh, what do we write well just for just for demo we'll uh, We'll write Lotus, we'll just put that there at the bottom. Uh, let's, okay, we'll double click in here to highlight all of the uh, letters and we'll make them a bit bigger. Uh, we'll just Something like that, just for demonstration. Click on the Move tool. Now, it's important when you go to Move Text that you're actually lined up with the text. Click and hold and you can drag. If you make a mistake and accidentally click on something else, you can move the wrong layer. Okay? Simple fix. Let it go. Go up to edit. Undo move layer. Alright? 
but make sure that when you line up this move tool that it's on the layer that you've highlighted because you can get yourself in a tangle. Okay, then just position that wherever you like it. Okay, that looks like it's not going to be enough room there, so just for demonstration, let's stick it over here. Same as last time. Right click, duplicate layer. So it's created a second layer of text right on top of this one. Get my move tool, click and hold, bring it across to the other side of the car. Layer, transform, flip horizontally, layer, transform, flip vertically. File, export to car, check our work. There you go. And that's how you change the colour of a car, put logos on, and add text. So it'll be up to your imagination to come up with something that you like. Alright? The last two, last couple of things I'll show you is this sidebar. And these undercar bars can also be changed. But it's not obvious. They're not in a layer by themselves. So you have to create a new layer. So once again up here, right click. New layer. I'll call this side pipe. Side pipe. And the side pipe is this rectangle here. Okay, that white area is the area on the side pipe that goes over the top of the number. Okay, but in order to change the color of that pipe, we need to create this new layer. Go to Tools, Selection Tools, Rectangle Select, and make a rectangle, drag a rectangle around the side pipe. Select a colour. Let's just stick with the colour scheme we have. Paint can grey. Done. To do the bottom stripes, the bottom stripes are, are rectangular areas along here. But this area in the middle is separate. So if we do a layer, right click, new layer, bottom, what are they? Bottom, I don't know, pipes. Bottom pipes. Once again, make sure we've got the right layer, bottom pipes. Go to tools, rectangle select. There's one. Actually, what I might do is make two separate layers, one for each pipe. Bottom pipe. One. Choose a colour. Let's go. Red will stand out, hopefully. Paint can. Paint. Move tool, new layer, bottom pipe two, just to make sure that I can change that if I get it wrong because it's not really showing what's happening there. Will that help? 
Yeah, that helps a bit. Using the wire shows me a little bit better where it is. Part two, tools, selection tools, rectangle select, and this one here with that grey in the middle. So roughly there. Roughly there. Paint. There we go. Make sure you turn the wire off, otherwise it will appear on your paint. Export to car. And there you go. Side pipes change to grey. Underbody pipes are red. So that is a layman's guide to creating a custom paint. Obviously if you want to get more into it you can watch the many tutorials on how to use GIMP that are on, uh, on YouTube and there's also some uh, useful stuff in the uh, in the iRacing forum under the paint section uh, specifically on GIMP. There's some good tutorials in there if you want to get deeper into it but that is a simple walkthrough on how to create your own custom paint, how to change the colour of the car, how to put down a stripe, um, how to put graphics on the car and how to utilise text. Okay so hopefully that's useful and it'll give you uh, some flexibility and so you're not bound by having to use the iRacing paint shop exclusively. Okay, hopefully that was helpful and uh, I'll see you on track.